Hello, and welcome to the channel. Uh, as you saw in the earlier video, that was our session negative one. Uh, soon will be uh, session zero, where uh, the members will meet together. You know, the characters will get to talk to one another. Put some interesting people together. Get some good uh, reactions, hopefully. Uh, but really, main, the main point of this uh, video, I just wanted to, like, you know, let people know what uh, what to expect uh, from the series. Like, what are we looking at uh, Star Trek-wise? I know there's, like, a lot of stuff that uh, you can take from the Star Trek universe. But I think uh, starting off at Enterprise is a great space. I know not it's not like a fan favorite all the time. It depends on when you started to watch Star Trek. If you're someone who started to watch Star Trek like just a few years ago, the earlier stuff is kind of popular. But if you, you know, have watched since the 60s or the 80s, uh, Star Trek Enterprise isn't really uh, as well written and as interesting as uh, the original series with uh, Shatner. And also the next generation with uh, Patrick Stewart. Probably about half of the people on our uh, crew uh, who are not very familiar with Star Trek. Uh, they've had, you know, they've seen some episodes, they've seen some movies, um, you know, they've been exposed to it, they've seen it. But, you know, like the ins and outs of all of it, they don't really, you know, they don't really, really know. They're not super uh, familiar with it. So there's going to be times when, as the Game Master, I'm going to be explaining things, going through things, perhaps describing what Vulcans are like, or what the Warp Core does, or uh, regular, like, day-in, day-out Federation Starfleet stuff. So if uh, anybody's curious as to why that's happening, that's, you know, there's some people on who are not super familiar with what everything is in Star Trek, like everything that is encompassed into Star Trek. And that's fine. So we have a couple people on here. I guess actually just one that's not really represented in live action. And that's uh, Aurelian, I believe is how you say it. And that's uh, from uh, the animated series in the 70s. Uh, it's like an, uh, an avian species. Star Trek Adventures, you know, allows that to be a thing. They put that uh, they could be a part of any era. Which I thought was interesting. I, I have I, I tried to look in to see like how, how they came up with that, like how they know that you could play in an Enterprise era, but it's not that big of a deal. And also when we uh, concluded uh, session uh, negative one, I, I moved some things around. I noticed that afterwards uh, that the commanding officer uh, Ashrev Arhat, uh, played by Mike, he had a lot. He is the commanding officer. And he is the chief of security, but I also now he was the communications officer, and that that's a lot. Like, looking at how other RPG people uh, do it, um, that would make Mike, you know, he would be rolling like almost the whole entire time, which is like great if it was a, a small team. But with six people, you're I mean you're going to end up having uh, two or three people just literally tuning in and just watching. And uh, some people are okay with that, and that's fine, but I, I want, you know, these people are cutting time out of their day, um, they're doing something that they don't necessarily really want to do, you know, like I said, they're not super familiar with Star Trek, so they're kind of appeasing me, and so I want to make sure that they get a lot of participation and a lot of uh, use out of it, you know, they feel, you know, happy, and they feel happy, and they feel uh, validated by, you know, having things happen pretty consistently. Um, so I switched, uh, communications and I gave that to the chief engineer, uh, John, uh, Zilex, uh, played by John. So he's now going to be the chief engineer and also the communications officer. He's no longer going to be at the con, uh, which we discussed in, in that previous episode. Uh, I now, I now made myself, I made a, an ensign, ensign Milek, he's a Ryzian. Give me as a game master a little bit of a toehold into my players' like narratives that they that they're making and things, and give little you know I can sort of hint or direct things a little bit. But he's a con officer. We we know he's not chief security. He's not a commanding officer. He's not an executive officer. He's not a third officer. He's not a chief medical officer. He's nothing that's gonna 
really sway anything or make people uh, do things that it wouldn't make any sense for him to <laughs> go and uh, command somebody or tell somebody what to do or like give them some sort of like really really specific like tell the captain some very specific advice um, just doesn't make sense um, also the two things that I'm think uh, thinking about doing I've been trying to uh, gather but you know it's just not a lot in the time period that we're dealing with after Star Trek Enterprise and before Star Trek Discovery there's not a lot of uh, wonderful you know really rich information at least canon I've seen the book, uh, there's a book called The First 150 Years of the Federation. I haven't read it or, or really looked into it too much, but I don't know if CBS or Paramount or whoever um, canonized that, which I don't I don't think they did. Um, but anyways, the point is, it's not a lot. So what I did read was, again, using uh, the animated series as a point of reference. They say that uh, like laser weapons are a thing and they end up using laser weapons in the cage uh, the original 1965 pilot for star trek so i think i'm going to go with that rather than the traditional star trek enterprise phase pistol i'm going to go with a laser uh, weapon and uh, we're instead of having like stun and essentially like, kill or harm um it'll be like you have like a ratchet type setting where they go like one two three four and so on and so forth and you know one essentially will be stun and anything like probably beyond like four or five probably on a scale of ten anything like beyond that you know you're starting to probably do just like really bad damage like disintegrating melting anything of that so that's that'll be something that won't be you know something within Star Trek Adventures, but it'll be closer to canon from the animated series. As they bring that out, I think it's the Slavers? The Slaver? It's it's the episode with the Kadzinki. They, um, they end up um, talking about it in there. They're going to be using a new uh, Warp 7 engine. It was kind of a hard battle because I was looking at uh, 2063 is the... Um, his first contact, and that's when Zephyr Cochran uses the warp, essentially warp one engine, and in a sh in, you know, and then they show an Enterprise um, warp four. I think they break the warp four thing, or no, warp three. They break warp three in in a pretty good gap. There's a, like between the two years, it's a pretty decent gap, and then in a short gap, they they it, you know the show starts with the uh, warp five engine. They don't talk about four at all. And it's a really, really short period between them breaking the warp three uh, barrier to a few years later. They're now putting warp five engines in uh, starships. So it was kind of hard to know because uh, our game is set uh, 12 years after Star Trek Enterprise, uh, after the Federation. Like essentially the episode of uh, These Are the Voyages, which is like technically a Next Generation episode. But they established that it's 2161, and these are the things to have been, you know, believed to have happened, essentially. So, I, you know, you can use it for reference. The thing that I wanted to do was, you know, I thought, let's give them a new warp engine. Because if you want to do anything, it's not next-gen or even original series. You know, when you look at the, the table on the core rulebook for Star Trek Adventures, it kind of breaks it down and how fast going through like sector, like one sector after another after another, how how long it would take. And it would take months. And if you're trying to do things to make sense, like, oh, this bad thing is happening here, or this something's happening here, and now they need help here. Well, you know, it's like, how is how are they finding things out that are like months away, like four months away to get to that thing? And I tried to stick pretty close to the actual map that they, they present. Um, Discovery and Strange New Worlds has like shown they've used a lot of a lot of the maps that are used in Star Trek Adventures are corroborated in canon now. You know, there's stuff about the new stuff, the new shows that are not great, but um, if you strip away some of the really terrible stuff. Some stuff still sticks, you know, some canon isn't really messed with, so 
that's what I have been using for anything that like the Star Trek Adventures thing doesn't necessarily say. I've been using actual TV shows around that era or things that they talk about um, to fill in the gaps. And sometimes that has to be the new stuff because it's the only content that's out there that gives you something that is actually canon rather than just making things up. And I'm a, I'm a big believer in canon. I believe that that's really what's the driving force for a lot of like long living franchises um, like Star Trek, like Star Wars, like the Marvel Universe. Yeah, the, th the things that matter to fans is continuity and lore and you know, keeping true to the material. So I'm trying to do that. And if I am going to reference any, like, Discovery or Strange New World, anything like that, I'm going to try to pick the good stuff, and if I end up picking things to relate to it, I'm going to try to do my best. I'm not a writer. I'm not anything like that. Um, but try to make, you know, the stuff that was, like, mm, not that great uh, in those new series, I'm going to try to make it interesting, if, if I end up doing that. I'm not 100% sure how crazy I'm going to get into it. I'm going to try to stay closer to what Enterprise was was laying the foundation for um but the cool thing is is going back to the warp core uh i was just re-watching shadows of pajem which is an episode in season one of star trek enterprise and they refer to that per, uh, perhaps the, the planet cordon has perhaps warp seven uh capabilities and it was a big thing and they were like wow wow you know and they bring out that the at that time in 2151 that the Vulcans had uh, warp 6.5 so it's not outlandish that in 12 years they would make a leap of two things you know again and they have already in the past shown that warp 3 to warp 5 there wasn't that big of a gap so it's not too outlandish and uh, I know that come the original series and um, Journey to Babel that's the whole thing is the the and being accepted or like should they be accepted into the federation and i know that that's like 90 something years into the future so gonna try to play with that a little bit narratively and like still keep them not in the federation still dealing with things but like some sort of like partnership or some sort of thing where um they work well together they, they did this little thing and they provided them like new technology to understand or the engine or the material whatever whatever it is. Uh, I haven't hammered that quite out, like, what exactly. Um, but basically to give them the Warp 7 engine. So, just wanted to put, the, put that out there. I'm going to repeat all this a lot in Session 0 and Session 1. You're going to hear me talk about it. Just in case I don't, I don't have the time to really go into great detail. Um, just wanted to put it out here for people who are interested. Um, I know I'm new to it. My name's Will. I'm new to the uh, YouTube scene. Uh, as a standalone, I've been uh, on my brother-in-law's YouTube page, The Plastic Underground, uh, numerous times, uh, doing podcast type things like movie reviews, and a couple he does um, prop building over there on his channel with like foam and 3D prints and uh, sometimes other uh, other things like uh, metal and stuff like that. But he's actually talking about maybe getting into into dice making um so we'll see but anyways that's like so other than that other than doing something with a family member and just being on a, a small channel uh that's growing and it's getting bigger he's getting up there actually he's getting close to uh i think 500 or 600 subscribers so that's great so other than that like i'm not i'm very new to this i don't expect a lot of people to watch this but if they do, thanks for watching. Boop, 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 boop. You know, subscribe. I'm going to try to do my best to make this interesting. You'll leave a like if you enjoy it. And um, leave a comment if you want to see something more. Got any questions? You want me to answer something? Something in one of our sessions doesn't make sense. Um, I'm new to the Star, Star Trek Adventures thing. I've never game mastered anything at all. Not a single thing. So any type of thing that doesn't make sense or it's weird or it's like, why aren't you doing it this way or... I'm complicating something. It's because I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know any better. So, but yeah, appreciate it. Here in a couple days, we're going to do session zero. And then it's going to be like almost two months. And then uh, 
I might do another video if I get some more, uh, you know, some people asking some questions. I might do another one between that, but if not, two months, we're going to start session one, which will be in November. Uh, November 6th is when we'll play it. It'll probably be up, the, the session will probably be up within a week. So we're going to do it bi-weekly until, I think, April. April or May, I can't remember exactly what the schedule is. We're going to play it bi-weekly in the week of us playing it, upload it. And then we're going to go on hiatus. Um, uh, I might do some little videos here and there, but uh, for the most part, from April or May, whenever we end, till probably September, unless there's interest on the page, I probably won't upload anything. And then come September, we'll do like a refresher course. We'll do like everybody will come together and we'll do like a little refresher course maybe do something fun just something silly might even do something else who knows we'll see might play a game or something we'll see that's next year <laughs> long time from now so thanks for watching the via non capta i'm will the game master you'll see my face and sadly in a few days and the rest of the crew and uh if you have any questions again leave them in the comments i'd be happy to answer them all right have a great day thanks